Chapter 1 Introduction On the Necessity of Liberating Value from Capital At the heart of our intellectual journey in this book lies the profound realization that in order to redefine capital, we must first engage in a transformative discourse that places, redefining, value at its very core. See End Note 1. In the face of an imminent convergence of ecological and social crises, it becomes increasingly evident that the immense influence wielded by capital is at the core of these threatening upheavals, jeopardizing the future stability and well-being of, extra, humanity. To navigate the treacherous waters of the present crises, we must acknowledge that the redefinition of capital necessitates a profound reassessment of its very foundation. Value, as the driving force behind capital, holds the key to unlocking new possibilities and transforming our understanding of economic and social systems. By critically examining the concept of value in a capitalist social formation, we gain insight into the processes and mechanisms by which capital exerts its power and influence. By gaining this insight, we can identify the limitations and negative consequences of the current model and seek alternative approaches that prioritize, extra, human well-living and genuine ecological sustainability. The re-evaluation of value is a crucial step in challenging the dominant capitalist paradigm and envisioning alternative models of social and economic organization. To begin our argument, if we accept the proposition that any quality necessary or advantageous for the survival and self-fulfillment of organized life, human and non-human, is of undeniable value, and if we consider capitalism as a socio-ecological formation under which all the ultimate sources of this true value are now at stake, it would then become imperative to re-theorize value and its ultimate sources, not only to reflect this dire reality but also to manifest the potential for real human liberation. The ultimate sources of true value have been depleted regarding their capacities to sustain life. Mother Nature, as the commoning source of livability, as seriously ill, and labor, as a re-productive, creative, and life-enhancing commons, as typically overexploited, alienated, and or made superfluous, while communal solidarity and convivial coexistence are severely damaged. Global, high-tech, and information technology complexes now exist to confuse and distract the masses, using highly sophisticated weapons of mass distraction, conditioning people to behave through their swelling sense of resentment, fear, and even hatred of the other. Meanwhile, while emancipatory movements strive to harness their prefigurative potential, they frequently encounter substantial structural barriers both internally and externally, hindering their ability to fully actualize their goals. Key historical processes that generate crises include the hyper-exploitation of labor and of the environment, underinvestment in necessary infrastructure, paired with overconcentration of wealth, capital, and power. Parasitic accumulation is a defining feature of the conditions outlined above, and it provokes acute systemic crises. All are present to a high degree in today's world system, and we are indeed in a general world system crisis. The reality of capital delegitimizes any analytically objective perception of value under capital, as true value. Therefore, a fundamentally new line of theorization is needed, where value is defined from a more than human societal perspective, within a normative frame of reference. This new notion of value, referred to as true value, is based on the negation of capital, understood as a life negating value in operation, i.e., a fetish value, sold to us as true value, see Hosseini, 2022. A. This necessary re-theorization of value will have significant implications for our relationship with capital and capitalism. It is time to move beyond the acceptance of the notion of value as dictated by capital. See end note 2. It is time to differentiate between fetish value, functioning as negative value in society, and true value, the former being the product of capital and the latter being capital's prey but also its antidote. This, we believe, is a matter of historical necessity in our theoretical praxis, action-oriented theorization as part of our historical praxis. In this book, we introduce the term, fetish value, to distinguish our conception of value from that of classical political economy and its Marxian critique, encompassing Marx's idea of commodity, value but extending beyond it, as we will elaborate. Fetish value should not be confused with Marx's fictitious value, that refers to fictitious capital as its embodiment versus real value embodied in productive capital. While keeping the notion of value within the contours of production relations, David Harvey instead prefers the notion of anti-value, see Harvey, 2018b, 
3 To avoid confusion, we have chosen to use the terms fetish value, not to be confused with Baudrillard's concept either, and true value, instead, see chapter 2. The history of capitalism has been tightly associated with the history of colonialism, or imperialism, and European or Western enlightenment induced modernity. Their coexistence has certainly not been a coincidence. The three have functioned interdependently, yet, relatively autonomously, and thus, the latter two, colonialism and Western modernity, could theoretically continue to exist and contribute to a downward spiral of the decline of modern civilization even in the absence of the dominance of capital, as arguably they did under the fascist and communist states of the 20th century. Perhaps it is this historical association, however, that has resulted in the mutation of each of them in recent centuries, morphing into modern phenomena with essential differences compared to their primordial, or, pre-capitalist, historical forms. And yet, in our view, it is the nature of this association that has received the least amount of theoretical effort. Regrettably, this book is not about theorizing the triad association, and for a good reason. To make the theorization of this association possible, first, we need to redefine capital since the existing notions can hardly be related to colonialism and modernity beyond simple descriptions of their historical coexistence. The focus of this book is thus on redefining capital and capitalism in order to meet the aforementioned prerequisite initially. Colonialism and modernity each have their own embedded mechanisms, which have already been the subjects of meticulous critical investigation and theorization over the past century. Mechanisms like rationalizing, instrumentalizing, standardizing, anthropomorphizing, classifying, codifying, and universalizing under the modernist paradigm, and mechanisms such as extracting, confiscating, occupying, dispossessing, enclosing, patenting, exploiting, subjugating, orientalizing, de-identifying, enslaving, and creating relations of dependency under the colonialist imperialist paradigm, pre-modern, modern, or postmodern. Not all these mechanisms can be brought into a single theory within the scope of this book. Our goal is mostly to outline the principles of a new framework that can be later extended further through future argumentations by incorporating as many mechanisms as possible into more detailed and synthesized analyses. In recent decades, critical theorists have made numerous attempts to move beyond the traditional understanding of capital as a social process, in which money generates more money by extracting the surplus value produced within capitalist commodity production relations. In the conventional Marxian framework, capital is indeed theorized as a societal process through which surplus value, in both real and fictitious forms, is produced and controlled via unsustainable and unsovereign ways of exploiting labor, both manual and intellectual, as the ultimate source of commodity value. Land, in the form of landed properties, reproductive labor, which is essential for the reproduction of labor, and nature, which provides free gifts, such as energy sources, mineral resources, the atmosphere, the Earth's biocapacity, fertile soil, water, etc., are all considered to be necessary conditions for wage labor. A growing number of revisionist voices which have not abandoned value theory have already been arguing for widening the notion of value to include uncommodified forms of labor, work. They normally forget, however, that value in Marx's capital is capitalist, commodity, value. Thus, the work of nature, the subaltern, communities, and the life makers can only be validly analyzed if our value theory differentiates between their value when they are outside and inside capitalist production and exchange relations. The challenge at hand is to address the ambiguity that arises from adhering to the Marxian labor theory of commodity value while simultaneously broadening the definition of value under capital to include the intrinsic value of uncommodified qualities, see Foster and Burkitt, 2018. 